Day two of the baseball grind, baby, and we're rolling on here at First Pitch on Wager Talk TV. Going to have some big game breakdowns, some best bets for you on a healthy slate here on a Friday heading into Easter weekend. We got Brian Power and Steve Merrill waiting in the wings. We'll get to Steve shortly because Brian said, I'm going first. I'm giving my big game, big game breakdown. I'm giving my best bet, and Steve can wait because I have things to do. So, Brian, the prima donna power, welcome in, my friend. <laughs> Happy to be here with you, man. Can't wait to be cashing tickets with you all season long. I know you don't want to wait, but I also forced you to do a Phillies game here right at the top. This one going at 3.05 Eastern. It was Thursday's game that got delayed. You want to talk the total. We've seen some over money come in on this one and you're saying I'm not really seeing it how are you going to be betting the Strider and Wheeler matchup yeah uh, first of all I would never tell the great Steve Merrill to wait these are early games though so I want to get the information out as oh, soon okay. as possible That's and Dan I don't need to tell you that these are the top two teams the NL East right here starting off the season opening day yeah. as you mentioned supposed to be yesterday but gets pushed back because of rain I'm gonna have a weather tidbit for you uh coming up in just a moment for today but first we know these teams both have strong lineups. In fact, the Braves scored more runs than anybody last season, 947. But I think the old early season adage of pitchers being ahead of the hitters is going to ring true this afternoon. You got Spencer Strider starting for Atlanta. Eight previous regular season starts versus Philly. How is Strider done? How about 8 0 with a 1.90 ERA? Doesn't mm. get much better than that. And it's not like the Phillies are the only team Strider dominates, considering that the betting market. Likes him as the favorite to win the NL Cy Young. He led the league in strikeout rate last season. So I expect a strong outing here from Strider. Interested to see how he uses the curveball, which he added to his repertoire during spring training. And then you talk about strong pitchers. Well, how about the Phillies' Zach Wheeler? He's been one of the best in the game over the last three seasons. 3.18 ERA uh, in 27 starts uh, in his career versus Atlanta. Three of the four times Wheeler faced the Braves last year, he went at least six innings and allowed three runs or fewer. Something else to keep an eye on, the Phillies, who have tended to struggle in the field, Dan, the last few seasons. As you know, they're going to be stronger defensively this season because the most significant change is Kyle Schwarber out of the outfield and settling into that DH role. I liked this a lot at 7.5. Even at 7, I think it's worth a play because considering who the two starters are, the Phillies being better defensively, and the forecast calling for 18-mile-an-hour winds blowing in from left field, I think the under is the safest bet for this big opening day matchup in the city of brotherly love. And we've seen some action both ways. As he said, it's now ticked down to seven from that opener of seven and a half. So it's bounced around a little bit, but it's settling in. And Brian's saying, look towards the under. You can check him out, wt.buzz slash BP. But before you head over there, make sure you like and subscribe here on the channel so we can keep bringing you this content basically around the clock with all the videos that we're dropping in all the sports that you love. All right, Brian has a tea time, so we got to get him out of here. Best bet, let's talk some Brewers and Mets. What are we thinking, BP? All right, public perception here on both teams seems to be pretty low relative to recent seasons. I can't say that's unjustified. The Brewers lost Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff, the latter being injured, the former traded. Uh, from the front end of their rotation, Closer Devin Williams, he's out till June. Mets, last year at this time, they had a record payroll. Uh, they did not even make the playoffs. They finished 12 games under 500. But uh, we've got another opening day matchup that had to be pushed back a day because of the weather. Odds makers have it lined as a toss up, but there are three reasons why I think you need to consider the Brew Crew here on Friday. One, they've got mm. the starting pitching edge with Freddie Peralta over Quintana. Burns and uh, Woodruff out of the picture. Milwaukee's going to be relying on Peralta to anchor this starting rotation. He's a guy who struck out 30% of the batters he faced last season, and I don't think he's going to have too much trouble with a Mets lineup that just doesn't have a lot of pop, quite frankly. Now, you look at Quintana for the Mets. He, he's a lefty. That brings me to the second reason I like the Brewers in this afternoon matchup. You look back at last season, after August 1st, the Brewers really hit lefties well. They posted a 117 WRC+. Plus. Uh, Quintana, he posted decent numbers in 2023, but 4.50 expected ERA, 18% walk rate. Pretty clear he <laughs> overachieved a bit. He's 35 years old, pitched 70, only pitched 75 and two-thirds innings last year, so it was a small sample size. The third and final reason I like the Brewers is the bullpen. Even without Williams, they're stronger on the back end, even with the Mets getting closer, Edwin Diaz back. Uh, 
This group for the Brewers, the relievers, averaged over a strikeout per inning last year. I can even throw in a fourth reason, that being the Brewers' very sound team defensively. Add it all up, and they are your best bet for the show today. Take Milwaukee, minus 105. The Brewers, says our man Brian Power. And if you head on over to his page, you can use code POWER30. That's going to chop $100 off, 30-day all access. So ride with BP for an entire month with a nice big savings there. All right, Brian, I know you got to get out of here, so we'll allow you to do so. And hop below in the comments. You heard his breakdown and his best bet there. You'll, prob- you'll probably be commenting as those games are going on. BP, getting you right into the action there. So comment below with the full slate going later this evening of what you're going to be eyeing as well. We'll hop up. We'll hop in the comments and chop it up with you there. One of the best getting down there in the comments is two R's, one L, Steve Merrill. Sorry, I, I made you wait that whole time. Typically, it's a little give and take. We get to talk about the games, but you heard BP at the top. He was like screaming at us, guys. Let me get in. Let me get out. I got to get the games for the folks. So I'm glad, Steve, you fresh off of Wager Talk today. You said, don't worry, folks. I'll get you the 10 10 game here. How about some St. Louis Cardinals and Dodgers action? Steve, welcome back to First Pitch, brother. And how are you eyeing your first big game breakdown of the year? Yeah, it's appropriate that I had to wait a little bit after Brian Power to do my big game breakdown, but it was well-deserved. It was a little Wager Talk TV detention in the corner here because um, <laughs> I had a lot of hats and props in the background here to play with, though, which is always nice. But yeah, for some reason, I kept skipping over Teddy's big game breakdown. Go what back and hell? watch Wager Talk today for that. And the reason was because we had so much content with Johnny the Greek in the middle of this show there. He threw in the UFC, like always, little college tournament, but he had mm-hmm. MLB, tennis, soccer, Horse racing, darts away. That was Andy Lang. But anyway, there was so much content, I got lost. Went right to Arthur to Caesar, my favorite segment of the week on Wager Talk yep. today. And then I still forgot Teddy's big game breakdown because I'm a creature of habit the way I've closed the show for two or three years. So I had to wait a little bit for this big game breakdown, but for good reason. But it is your late night game. Wanted to get Brian's daytime game in earlier there with the Phillies Braves. And Arthur and I talked some baseball from the Westgate Superbook. And we also talked about these Dodgers. And I mentioned on Wager Talk today that – the Dodgers are going to be minus more than 200 almost every game this season. You've got to hit 67% to break even lane minus 200. The Dodgers have to win about 108, 109 games to have a 67% win percentage this year. So that shows how inflated these lines are. Now, first of all, I think the Dodgers might win more than 110, but probably not much more than that. That's just hard to do with 162 games. But they are so loaded on a nightly basis. There's just no downside to this lineup. The offense is all-star caliber from top to bottom. You can't pitch around anybody. And then they have pretty darn good pitchers as well. The key to the Dodgers, though, has been for a couple years now, not to lay the big number, but to play the run line. And I've talked about this for the last two or three years here on MLB First Pitch, ever since I joined wagertalk.com back in 2020. And it continues to work. When the Dodgers win, they win by margin. Now, Arthur DeCesar had a good point. When they play bottom feeders like the Rockies and other teams this year, we're going to see minus two and a half run lines. So, I'm talking minus one and a half run line. But look at tonight's game. You're getting over a $2 favorite to win straight up down to a pick em price with the run line minus one and a half. And this continues to work. Dodgers won out in Korea by three runs, and then they lost outright by four runs. Then last night, they won outright by six runs. Basically, when they lose straight up, the money line at all cashes. When they win, they win by two or more. So you're cutting that price in half. And instead of having to win 67 70% of your bets, you only have to win about 52 53% to break even, and that's the Dodgers' run line. I like them in the spot tonight, but I'm not laying the big price. I prefer to cut it in half and take the Dodgers minus one and a half on that run line and checking the Wager Talk live odd screen here on Friday afternoon. We see it's currently minus 115. Really hasn't moved much for the opener. Um, I also like the pitching matchup, Miller versus Thompson, and obviously I love the offensive matchup every game with the Dodgers. And then on top of that, Cardinals do not enter in good current form. They only had three hits in that 7-1 loss yesterday. Nothing misleading about the one run. They only left four guys on base. Dodgers had 10 hits. Uh, Dodgers have more hits tonight, more runs, and I think they most likely win by margin. Yeah, Steve, something that is going to be a common thread throughout the season, I'm sure, is going to be seeing minus 225s and higher on the money line for the Dodgers. So if you want to bet that side, like Steve said, you're going to have to try and get creative. You're going to have to try and find ways to break it down, split the wager up, bet team totals, try and find uh, different options because that's just going to be the reality of betting a team that had the offseason like they had. Betting scandals or not, uh, team's damn good, and they proved it last night. And uh, I'm kind of with Steve. It's going to be tough to pick your spots with them. But that's what he's doing here out of the gate. 
Steve, let's talk a little best bet action here. Let's talk some D-backs and some Colorado Rockies action. We got Contrell and Kelly, it looks like, are going to be the starters in this one. And you think it might just be worth it to uh, take the favorite and don't look back. Well, I had a nice start to the baseball season yesterday on opening day. I had one official MLB best bet. That was the Arizona Diamondbacks, a 16-1 to blowout winner. No, I did not lay the big number. I played the run line. Minus one and a half, mm. around minus 15 or so. So it was a nice, easy 16 to one blowout winner. Also, cashed our free daytime play in the under in that Royals game yesterday. So a 2 0 sweep to start baseball. I'm going to give you my top baseball play for free here on Friday in this game. And that's because I have three other games that are stronger best bets in basketball tonight. An NBA best bet, one of the better NBA plays I've seen all season, and also two college basketball tournament best bets, one early, one late. So it's a three for one basketball special Friday night. For Steve mm. Merrill, wagertalk.com. So I'm going to give you my top baseball opinion for free. And once again, I'm coming right back with the Diamondbacks. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That easy 16 to 1 run line winner last night. And the run line, once again, is the way to play this game. Let's not lay minus 230 on the money line. Let's take Arizona down to minus one and a half, minus a dollar 15 on the run line. And when we're playing run lines, we want teams that can win by margin. First of all, Arizona always plays in a higher score, a hitty friendly park. The total is 9 over 20, um, so that's showing this should be one of the higher-scoring games tonight in the NL. And I also like the fact they're in excellent current form offensively. Nothing misleading about the 16 runs last night. They had 18 hits in that game. Meanwhile, Colorado just one run on four hits, and they do like like perhaps the worst team in baseball this year. So we get a hot offense, good situation, very reasonable run line price against maybe the worst team in baseball. Also like the pitching matchup here, you know, Cal Quantrill comes over from the Cleveland Guardians. He was good two years ago when he went 15-5 and five with a 3.4 ERA in 2022, but he was bad last year, a 5.2 ERA in his 19 outings. Didn't look much better this spring. In fact, in his last spring training start this past week, I believe he gave up four home runs and just over four innings of work against the Reds. Uh, this all adds up to another big offensive output, and that's what you look for when you're playing the run line. So don't lay – the inflated number here of minus 235. Take it all the way down to minus one and a half, minus 115. I think Arizona wins again big tonight on Friday. He's Steve Merrill looking to go with the D-backs, and you can see Steve all over Wager Talk TV. He joins our live programming on a basically daily basis, and for you basketball fans out there, don't forget his Fade the Public video, and after you check him out here at YouTube, Definitely check him out over at wagertalk.com. And you can always go to wt.buzz slash deals to find ways to save big betting all the sports you love. So just as a reminder, we got Brian Power on the Brewers money line. Our man Steve Merrill, best bet, looking at the D-backs, laying the run and a half. The Joe Ranieri, if it ain't broke, fix it special. Hop below in the comments and let us know what your best bet is on the slate here tonight. Let us know what you're eyeing over the weekend as well and join us here on Wager Talk TV for our Wager Talk last call and you can sweat out some of those games live and get prepared for the weekend with the gentlemen on Saturdays slate as well and when you comment below we love breaking down the games with you. We had a tip in the comments yesterday saying hey why don't you lay the run and a half with the O's Really had to sweat that one with the 11-3 to final. So you never know what kind of gold you're going to find down there in the comments. We want it to be yours as well. That's going to be the end for us here. Another week coming to a close at first pitch. But, hey, if you want more sports betting content, you don't have to go far. That's right. You can click the video right here on your screen. Get all the info you need to bet all the sports you love. It's always a click away at Wager Talk TV.